Balanced View offers a very clear, very direct, very simple and accessible education in the nature of mind. And, well, let's start at the beginning. And the, the terminology that's used here is absolutely key because the terminology is what allows us to speak about anything that's going on in our experience and to put it into a context where we can understand what's going on and then secondly extract the power of great benefit from whatever we're experiencing. And the terminology by which we can understand or describe any of our experience is really to say that whatever we're experiencing, whatever we're thinking, uh, sensing, feeling, we can simply call data. Now that keeps it really simple. We don't need to have lots of complicated descriptive frameworks. We don't need to try and divide our experience into different types of experience. It's data. All of it is just data. It's information. And all of this information is known in exactly the same way. There is an intelligence that is looking through your eyes right now, that is hearing these words, that is the ability to know. Now this intelligence is required for anything to be known. It doesn't matter what you're experiencing. It doesn't matter how you describe what's going on. The underlying intelligence, the ability to know, is always exactly the same. The content, the data, is always changing. So the descriptions of what's going on are, are never the same. Each, each moment is completely unique. And yet the intelligence that is always at the basis is completely constant and stable. And with a very simple instruction of just taking short moments to allow the descriptions, allow the data, allow this flow of data just to be however it is, and to relax the need to describe, then we can identify this intelligence as the basis of our experience for ourselves, with our own experience, and in our own experience. And for me, this was amazing to discover, because I had read so many things about the nature of reality, about truth, about the nature of mind, about all kinds of things. And yet here was a really simple instruction that I could test out and to see whether what was being expressed here was true or not. I could take this simple practice of short moments and I could repeat it in my own experience whenever I naturally remembered and see for myself whether this underlying intelligence was always naturally present. And so that's what I did when I came to this training. This practice of short moments is so powerful because it allows you to integrate the recognition of what is primary and fundamental into your everyday life. Into whatever you're doing, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're feeling, becomes an opportunity to discover the fundamental nature of reality. Now that's amazing. Now when I began to relax and allow the data to ju just to be exactly as it was, then I could see for myself that the data was just this flow of experience. It was seamless. There was no way I could actually see where one experience finished and the next one began. It was this seamless flow of data. And I relaxed and I allowed it to be as it was. And this was such a sense of relief and openness to see that I didn't have to manage what was going on. I could discover an ease and an openness that was always present that didn't depend on a particular set of descriptions. So previously I'd thought that I needed things to look or feel a certain way for me to feel comfortable, for me to feel as if I knew what was going on, as if I knew how to act in the world, you know, what to say, what to do. I needed to understand things in an intellectual way. I needed to feel good about things. And instead I discovered that there was this intelligence that included all of this data. So it included the positive descriptions, it included me feeling good, it included me feeling happy. 
but it also included everything else that I'd ever experienced. It included the negative descriptions. It included things like grief and pain. It included things like um, boredom. It included things like irritation. And I saw that I could actually relax and allow all of these things to be as they were too. And at the beginning this seemed like quite a daunting task because there was just so much going on. And this is where the, the, the simple instruction of short moments really comes into its own. It's a short moment of just relaxing wherever you are right now and allowing yourself to notice the intelligence that's naturally present. And I was like, great, you know, I can do that. It's just a short moment. And in this short moment, every single time I checked in, there was this intelligence, there was this openness. And every single time I checked in, there was the benefit to be found. Not as some idea of something that I'd read in a book or some ancient tradition, but in my own direct experience, here and now. Because this intelligence was bright and alert. This intelligence didn't depend on any particular description. It was the basis of all descriptions. And in these short moments I was tapping into this intelligence, allowing this intelligence to inform my speech and my actions. And in these short moments I began to see that this intelligence was actually what I could rely on. This was where I could find everything that I was looking for. I'd looked in the descriptions for, for happiness, I'd looked in the descriptions for a sense of understanding and comprehension. I'd looked in the descriptions for, for love. And all of the time these descriptions were continually changing. It was like trying to, to, to capture these ghosts that were, that were gone before I could even really, really know they were there. And instead I began to rely on what was constant and stable in my own experience. This opening intelligence. Always creating new diverse, dynamic, beneficial energy. The data itself is this dynamic energy of benefit. And when I relaxed and I discovered that I had access to this intelligence and it was always accessible, and when I relied on it, I could extract the power of benefit from the data, from my everyday lived experience. So what shifted was that everything became, first of all, an opportunity to become familiar with what was fundamental with my own experience, absolutely everything, one short moment at a time. But secondly, everything became an opportunity to naturally express the beneficial potency that I really was. And for me this was incredible. This was so far beyond anything that I told myself life could be about. All of these limited ideas I had about who I was and what life meant and what I was capable of. And short moment by short moment, just training up the power to really express this, this potency and express this desire to be of benefit, which had always been there. And yet over the years I'd learned to damp it down, to suppress it, to limit myself and to really believe in these definitions that I'd learned along the way. Each short moment cuts these ideas, cuts these assumptions at the root and you go directly to the heart of every single moment, shining brightly with benefit. And to discover that there's nothing to avoid. To discover this, this courage and this stability that al allows me to, to face anything that comes up. Not suppressing anything but allowing everything to be felt fully, but stably grounded in the support of the Four Mainstays. And the short moments is, is the first of these mainstays. The mainstays are this, this rock, this stable basis on which we find the capacity to really face everything in life and to transmute it into its beneficial counterpart. And to see this coming about in my life, for me, has just been incredible. That's why I can speak about it with such conviction, because this has been my own direct experience. And not because I'm somebody special or somebody 
that's different from any of you. All it's taken is this really simple moment-to-moment -moment commitment to train up in the, in the power of, of, of mind. This is what unites us all, this is what we all have access to. I always knew there was something going on that they weren't telling me about. I knew it. I always knew it. And I was just looking and seeking and searching in all these different places to discover what this was. And what I found in Balanced View was these really simple, clear instructions and the support network that would allow this to become more and more obvious in my life. And so the four mainstays are the, the, the vehicle, are the way that this becomes obvious and stable, this recognition. Because I'd had glimpses of this before. It wasn't new. Everything I was hearing was incredibly familiar. And yet it, it had always been a, a fleeting experience or a, a recognition that I desperately tried to hold on to or recreate. And yet with the support of the mainstays, I discovered that I had the capacity to rely on this intelligence wherever I was and whoever I was with. That I didn't have to be caught up in all of these stories of judgment and blame and criticism. I could relax with those too, one short moment at a time, and extract the power of benefit from those two, to really see clearly what would be of most benefit in this situation. Do I just sit, sit quietly and say nothing here, or, or should I say something? And previously that would have been a, a cause for huge anxiety and angst. You know, that, that tension, do I say something, do I stay quiet? If I stay quiet then I'll feel awful and guilty because I should have said something, but if I say something then what will people think of me and maybe I'll say the wrong thing and all of this data just coming up in a certain situation. <coughs> and instead now I relax with all of that data that still comes up, seeing that none of it has the capacity to to shake me from this stable foundation of open intelligence. All of it is open intelligence, simply expressing itself. And so I relax right there with all of that data. And the natural expression of benefit just flows forth, however it looks. And it doesn't look in any particular way. Keeping silent one time and speaking up with an incredibly loud, clear voice the next situation you find yourself in but with a, 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 an easeful openness, completely open-hearted relating. But it has to start with that open-hearted relating with ourselves and our own data. Until we have that, that love and that kindness and that ease and sensitivity with ourselves and our own descriptions about ourselves and our own descriptions about everybody else, then it's impossible that we can express that, that same love and that same tenderness towards anybody else. But the two go hand in hand once that, once that gentleness towards ourselves is felt, once that, that ease to allow ourselves to be exactly as we are is, is trained up, then very naturally that's expressed in our relationships with other people. But at the beginning to keep the focus on ourselves is absolutely key. And it actually keeps it really simple. We don't need to have lots of complicated descriptions about what other people are going through. We keep the focus on ourselves and our own data one short moment at a time. That daunting huge mountain that we seem to climb, that we thought we needed to climb, and just be taken one step at a time, one moment at a time, one short moment at a time. This is the way to really settle into your, your, your power of great benefit. You always knew you had. So all we're doing here is training up in that, becoming confident and certain that this is who we really are.